Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here with another video, and we're going to take a closer look at my uh, brand new X13 Yoga Gen 3. So, 13.3 uh, inch ish uh, screen. Um, this is a convertible laptop uh, ThinkPad product line. I'm really enjoying it so far. It's been about a week um, of having it as my daily driver, and I'm absolutely loving it. So, being a previous uh, ThinkPad Yoga owner, uh, user in the past, uh, a long time ago for work, I had an X1 Yoga, then I had an L13 Yoga uh, a couple years ago, the Gen 1 version, um, and now I'm back with another one. Um, really love this form factor and design, the convertible form factor and the smaller size laptop is um, really appealing to me. So again, taking a look at the design here, the um, case material here is this uh, carbon fiber plus magnesium. It is not the same as your traditional ThinkPad carbon fiber top. It doesn't have the same texture to it, um, but it is. it does have a texture as opposed to what you get with like the aluminum uh, models or a plastic model. And I really actually enjoy this. Uh, um, it's not completely uh, fingerprint free. Um, if you've got, you know, summer hands <laughs> like I do sometimes, um, it will leave some marks, especially palm rest prints and things, but it cleans up a lot easier than the regular carbon fiber does. Um, and, and the finish feels to me like it is a lot more durable a finish. So it, will, it won't mark or scratch or, or, or do any of that type of stuff. Um, and, I, and I like this much better than the aluminum finishes, um, the, the, the metal finishes. I still like the fact that it's dark. It's not fully black like the carbon fiber, but it's still pretty nice. Um, uh, taking a look again at the ports um, on the X13 Yoga, there's a pair of Thunderbolt ports, then HDMI and USB 3.2 Gen 2, I think is what it is. Optional smart card. This blank spot here, if you do manage to get a model that's got WAN capability, your SIM card slot will be located there. And then on the opposite side, you've got uh, Kensington Audio, another USB port, and then your garage pen, uh, which is a great feature to have. Uh, as well, that you don't have to worry about having like magnetized on the side like some other convertible models do. Um, you're going to lose it um, where when it's garaged, it's fine and it charges while it's garaged. Uh, intake here for your cooling and then your output for your cooling on the back. Um, it's not great um, uh, airflow when you think about the, the styling there, but um, considering the specs of the machine and how it's designed, you're okay. And the fan on this one, while you will hear it when it's running at full power, um, it doesn't have like the high pitched squeal that you sometimes get off smaller form factor machines, um, which um, is nice. Uh, so the, the fan is, is quite unobtrusive. And this is from me coming from a P1 Gen 4 ThinkPad workstation model as my a, like previous thing that I was using. Um, that one, the whoosh sound of the fans was really loud because it had really powerful fans, but a really small output, um, which, uh, or really small, you know, uh, airflow area for the fans to blow air through. So it made it really kind of whooshy sound and it, it wasn't, it was obtrusive in my opinion. Um, this one, because you've got the smaller fan, um, the smaller output for the air is, is equalized. So it doesn't come out as bad. Um, then when you open up on here, uh, you've got your uh, nice keyboard. Um, I wasn't sure about the keyboard on this one. It is one of the newer styles of keyboards for the ThinkPads. I'm coming from um, using the P1 Gen 4 and I've got a T14S for work, T14S Gen 2 and this one. These newer keys are okay. Um, the L13 Yoga Gen 1 was just far enough back that it had the previous set of keys, which had a little bit more rounding on the edges of each key, um, which was a little bit more comfortable. But once you start typing on it, you get used to it really quick. The travel is great. Um, the, the, the key presses work on the edges of the keys as well, um, and it's all fine. Um, power button has built in um, fingerprint reader, which is I love. That's great. Um, the new uh, touchpad on here is nice. It's disabled as I disable on everything pad that I use because um, I use my track point um, all the time. And then you've got your screen area here. You will notice when we boot this up, um, the screen area does not extend the whole way around the bezels. And there's a really good reason for that because when you switch into tablet mode for one of these, you want a place to put your hands. So whether I'm holding it on this side or I'm going to hold it on 
you know, cover up the camera and I'm holding it on this side or I'm holding it on this side or I'm holding it on this side. I don't want my thumbs touching the screen where I can do touch screen work, right? I want to be able to hold a spot where my thumb won't touch anything. So you need to have this bezeling going on. Now that being said, this is still a 16 by 10 screen, um, which is the, you know, the new screen types, which is awesome. So you've got that capability. And of course, this is a yoga. You've got, you know, your standard clam mode. You can do the opposite mode for watching. Great for airflow on that one. You've got tablet mode. You've got tent mode. Uh, so there's lots of different ways that you can be able to, uh, to, to move that around and use it. Um, I am going to uh, do a first for you uh, and for me, and that is we're going to crack the shell on this. So I haven't opened this up yet, so you will be the first to see and experience it. These are the screws. It appears as I'm unscrewing these, they are uh, captive screws, which is always nice to have captive screws. So that when you are working on these, if you are doing a deployment or something at a workplace and you guys are going to be using these, oh, ah, uh, this one came out. It is captive. The, uh, the, the extra piece is there. It appears to be there, but, uh, that one popped. So, uh, let's see if I can, what I needed to do to get underneath this. Yep. So very easy. The, the bottom, right, so at the back is where the screws lift up from, and then the front end, you're going to have some clips. So you're going to see, look at them all, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven clips on the front. So there are a lot of little plastic tabs there to worry about breaking if you're not careful. So when you are um, removing this or putting it in, just be really ginger with the front end as you lift it off. And we can take a look at the inside here. So we've got the um, 52 watt hour, I believe, battery in this one. So it's got a really nice um, high cap battery. Uh, we've got our speakers down the sides. We've got an N.2 slot here where our storage device is. You have your uh, Wi-Fi, I think, underneath one of these. Uh, CPU is here. You've got some thermal uh, coverage here. Uh, there is an M.2 slot available here. This is where you would install your uh, WAN controller um, if, you, if you had one coming with this. Um, it's important to note, you can't just add a WAN card into any of these models if it isn't WAN ready. WAN when ready means it's got a SIM card slot and it's got the antennas wired up to go into the back uh, up into the um, uh, into the the frame of the LCD screen. Without that installed, you put a WAN card in, it's got nowhere to go. So while I do have the M2.2 card he slot here to add a WAN, it wouldn't be able to go anywhere. I do believe there is some functionality with these that you can install a second storage device in this slot. I don't think that I what I read so far for a lot of these models, these aren't whitelisted. For specifically for WAN, although they are whitelisted for which WAN cards you can use, so you could put another storage device. And I think it looks like the Wi-Fi on this is on board as well. It looks like this chip right here, because uh, I do see antennas coming off of uh, antenna wires coming off here. So the WAN is built onto the system board as well. The memory is built onto the system board, and it will be on the other side of the board. So everything is soldered on these on these uh, on these uh, thin models. This is a price you will pay and you want to pay to have a, a, the yoga style thin and light machines um, because you want to cut down on as much um, installation components as possible um, and have things as integrated as possible for the, best, uh, for the best thermal allowance. Now, as I mentioned, I want to be really ginger with this, with making sure I get my snaps and everything back in just the right place because I don't want to break any of them on this uh, on this brand new laptop. And it is kind of, it's, I don't know if it's nerves or if it's just, it is kind of maybe a little bit awkward uh, to make sure you get them all in. Because um, it does feel like, it does feel like they kind of don't want to, they don't want to play uh, 
they don't want to play nice. Oh, I think I got it. Yep, I got it. All right, so just give it a little bit of a, a push down along the, the uh, edges. We'll put our one captive screw that decided that it didn't want to remain in captive. And then we will reassign the rest of our screws. And again, as I mentioned, the thin and lights, these ultra models and convertible models, you're going to have those soldered pieces. Obviously, on a standard laptop model, you're going to want to have some upgradable components like memory and storage and other things. Um, and then on a on a like a desktop replacement model, like the workstation class, I mean, you really want to have as many replaceable components as possible. Um, you know, even up to and including what I, I know they haven't done in a long time, but I wish they would get back to doing is including desktop processors in the workstation class models. So you can really get that full desktop replacement experience. But obviously on these, that isn't necessary. So we're going to boot up now. I just hit the power button and we'll get our, our boot cycle going on this. See how it goes. So the system will do its check, get the BIOS going, and then, uh, and then Windows 11 should start up relatively quickly. And let's see, I've got my Windows Hello set up, so we'll see if it catches my face from this angle. Can you see me? No, it doesn't want to sign in. <laughs> All right, we'll just use a fingerprint sign in. Okay, uh, so now we've got our system booted up. And I will show you, I will show you, you can see here from a screen perspective, the max brightness on this screen is 500 nits. So um, if I go and scroll down all the way to the lowest, you can see here it's pretty, pretty dark, pretty dark. It's very, you know, very nice to see, but when full brightness here, we get a very nice bright crisp image. Um, I really like this, so coming from, again, from my previous P1 Gen 4, had a 600 nit screen, which was super bright, it was great. Um, and then prior to that, the L13 Yoga I had had a 350 nit screen, which was fine inside. But as soon as you go into a brighter light setting, like here, where you've got the big LED light shining down on the, on the workbench, um, you know, it was really hard to see what was going on um, on the screen. So having that 500 nit brightness is really, really crisp. And of course, you've got that uh, touchscreen experience uh, on here to be able to see what you're doing as well. So really nice, enjoyable experience. 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen uh, with 1080p. Uh, I'm loving it. I I'm finding it really great to have it. The battery life on this has been great. I haven't stress tested the max battery life but I have gone uh, all day, uh, essentially, on battery only uh, without needing to charge. Um, so the lowest I think I've managed to get uh, has been about like 17 or 18 percent that I've got the battery down to after using it for about six hours actively. So that's like watching YouTube videos and, and doing some typing and doing internet work and maybe launching a, a game here or there to play for 10 or 20 minutes on a break. Um, uh, and it, and it still is able to last. So it's really, really good, really enjoying it. Um, um, I would say I'm very happy with it. If I would say anything that's a negative, the only thing that I would say I'm not a hundred percent on, as I mentioned at the very beginning is the keyboard. Um, the newer keyboard style here with the flatter keys that don't have the rounded edges, I'm not a huge fan of, but as I said, once you start typing on it for a little bit, you get used to it very quickly. Um, every ThinkPad keyboard I've ever used, even, you know, as different as they get over time, they're still very comfortable and enjoyable to type on. Um, you know, some generations didn't have the most, some have better. Um, this isn't my favorite, uh, but it's still good. Uh, so, uh, but everything else on it is, is wonderful. Um, really enjoying the quality, the build quality, as I mentioned again, this case quality, this new material that, that, that uh, is being used. Um, I really like it. Like, I, I like it a lot better than the older, the previous carbon fiber in terms of how well it holds up to fingerprinting and marking and how well it cleans. And just the fact that it's got a texture to it still that you don't get when you just do the flat plastic or the metallic um, uh, chassis frames. So really enjoying it. 
Um, I would recommend it, um, again, if you're looking at it, of course. Um, things to be aware of as well is soldered memory. So make sure you're grabbing a model that's got the most memory you're ever gonna need. So I got one that had 32 gig in uh, soldered because I thought to myself, 16 is good, but what if I wanna do some virtualization on this? I wanna have that memory available. Um, and then for WN, so WN wasn't available for me yet in Canada. If it's available in your region, make sure if you're not getting a model that has a card installed, you at least confirm that it's WN ready, which means it's got the SIM card slot and it's got the antennas wired up in the frame as well. Because it, will, while it may not be a huge challenge if you're really good at it to take it apart uh, from a screen perspective to install the antennas, you still have the side of the unit that doesn't have a SIM card slot that you're gonna have to like cut open the chassis to fit. So don't do that. Make sure you've got one that's got that functionality ready if you wanna have WN functionality um, and you're not gonna be getting it to, to go. So just check PS ref or whatever stuff you're doing, your business partner, or whoever you're checking with to, to look for that information or if you're doing a custom build once they're available um, on the Lenovo website um, that you make sure that that option is checked uh, and available for you. Yeah, so that about wraps it up, I think, showing off the machine here. It's really enjoyable. I'm loving it. Um, and I uh, hope this helps you if you're looking to make a decision on whether to get one um, or not, um, that you had a chance to take a look at something here on uh, on YouTube before uh, before jumping the gun or before uh, doing a search or anything like that uh, for, uh, for a machine for yourself. Um, as always, I hope you are staying safe and healthy, and we will catch you in the next one.